Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from Nowcom. Today I'm your host Urbanas, the cybersecurity analyst here at Nowcom. So today, it's a fun video today, we will be exploiting the Log4 shell vulnerability, the Log4j vulnerability on an instance of Apache Solar which is a Java-based login utility. So in 2013, the Log4j package added a JNDI lookup plugin. It's necessary to understand the Java naming and directory interface, the JNDI, to kind of understand the Log4j and how it works really. So the Log4 shell is a result of a feature in the Log4j library that fails to properly validate incoming data, right? So Really, if we take the Java naming and directory interface, the JNDI, the first part, the naming service, is essentially an entity that associates names with values, which are known as bindings, which provide a facility to find an object based on its name that is known as a lookup or basically a search operation. So that's really the naming service in a nutshell. The directory service right the directory interface of the jndi is a special type of naming service so bear in mind that naming service in there which allows storing and finding directory objects which you'll see in a bit so log4j uses message lookup substitution mls to define a number of lookup functions that allow log4j to alter the content as it's being logged Okay, so it's typically used to dynamically edit certain logging types. Essentially, JNDI, the <laughs> Java naming and directory interface, is able to pull content directly from the outside domains using several network protocols, right? So you see the LDAP protocol, the lightweight directory access protocol, has a specific domain in the form of this query this syntax right here as you can see on the screen so log4j will download and execute content hosted on that domain which <laughs> which is where the vulnerability lies right which is where the actual vulnerability lies so this content okay that it downloads will also be executed with the same privileges as the system log4j is running so without further ado let's get right into the video and exploiting it hands-on so the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to start an MMAP scan on the port 10.0.2.15 that I'm hosting Apache Solar locally on that IP address. Okay, so here I start an MMAP scan and I find that port 8983 is open, which is the port of Apache Solar. I start a netcat listener on port 1337, right? So some of you may know what this port references. It's a hacker's term of um, starting a netcat listener. Here I will use a specific payload that will basically send back a request back to the port that we're listening on. This is the format of the usual syntax that takes advantage. Bingo, we get a connection back. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use MarshallSec to build an LDAP referral server, which will be used to redirect the initial request of the victim to another location, which will be where the secondary payload is hosted, which will basically ultimately will run code on the target. So we'll build this with MarshallSec right here on port 8000, which will be the Python server that is being hosted on. So with the LDAP referral server, can be started to direct connections back to our secondary HTTP server. Okay, so there you can see that it's hosted on 1389, which is the LDAP port. So here you can see that the Java payload is running netcat.e.bin.bash, bin slash bash, sorry, on the IP that we're gonna wanna sort of send back the connection to. So there needs to be running a specific version of Java 1.8.0. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna compile that and to compile it, we're gonna use Java C, which is Java compile and exploit.java. There we go. So we compiled it. And the next thing to do, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna host the Python web server where the LDAP instance right there will fetch from, and it will basically execute the code, giving us a remote shell, all right? So here, 
I'm going to host a Python web server because I think it's kind of the easiest web service to host, qu the quickest, to be honest. I think it's one of the quickest. I know the PHP one is quick as well, but I do really prefer the Python. So you see that the port 8000 defaults and the HACCP here is port 8000 as well. Now this will fetch the exploit file, right? So I'm listening on port 1337, which I should get a command back. I should get a shell back, sorry. And um, here I'll use the same syntax as I did before, okay? But in this syntax, I'm going to basically specify the file that I wanna fetch. And here we go, we get a connection back. Now, how easy was this? This has a CVSS score of 10, so it is very easy to pull off. And if you do have any cybersecurity concerns, please get in contact with us. We will do our best to provide you the best service that we can. And that's it, guys. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. There'll be more videos to come, so look forward. Thank you, guys. I'll see you later. It's been Irvin. Thank you. Bye.